Hello, our dear viewers. Today we've made a short video on how to use the alternator base of the test bench MS008. Just to remind, this bench is used for diagnostic of both 12 and 24 volts alternators. Now we have two alternators, one we've already mounted on the bench. This alternator from Toyota Crown or Mark 10 with RLO connection terminal. We also have the second alternator, LIN. This alternator is installed into the car like Citroën, C4, some Peugeot models, etc. So we have two alternators, one controlled by RLO, the second by Linbus. The first alternator we'll be testing, controlled by RLO. You can see it on the bench. The diagnostic cable is connected. Prior to test, we have to connect the power crocodile clips. The pin assignment of the alternator connector we can see when we choose the required connector type. Here we have the tips with the main RLO outputs – ignition, feedback and lamp connection. Let's go back to main menu, choose database and here we have to insert the alternator number. That you can find on the unit body or on the box or on the sticker. The number of our alternator is 27060. The bench shows that the alternator is available in the database. We choose this model and we can see the necessary information about the alternator in the right part of display. We see that it operates at 12 volts. The maximum load current is 130 amperes. We also see the cable required and the pulley diameter. The bench offers two test modes – manual and automatic. Now I'm choosing the automatic test. Choose RLO connection. And here we have our test stages. The first one – test of the lamp indication. The bench tested the lamp circuit, it's in order, the checkmark reports. Next, we go to the rotation test. Done. The second test stage is completed. The relevant test results are displayed, such as the voltage when we set RPM are achieved, meaning the idle RPM, a little load was set, etc. The next test step – diagnostics of the voltage regulator. Prior to its testing, I'd like to remind the many of all these parameters that are in the bottom. The first parameter – alternator, alternating current rate. From the previous video, you may already know that it's important parameter that enables the evaluation of both the stator winding coil and the diode bridge. The alternating current rate should not exceed 10% of the direct current. The direct current rate, we can see it in the next result box – IDC. Then there's the alternator output voltage at the output of the terminal B+. Here the pulley RPM temperature. We go down to the next, to the penultimate test – voltage regulation.
in the last test stage, diagnostics of the alternator at maximum load. As I mentioned earlier, this alternator operates at 130 amperes maximum. So during the test, the alternator electric load will be increased. And the main task of the alternator, the main test parameter, output voltage rate should not be lower than the definite acceptable value. For our test it's 14 volts. Now let's make a test, and then referring to the results we'll make a conclusion. The last test stage is completed. The maximum load value was achieved, even a bit higher, meaning the maximum current at the alternator output 130 amperes. The computer, though, loaded the alternator until the voltage at the terminal B+, falling lower than the definite value. It means that at the peak moments the alternator can generate the output voltage higher than the rated one. Here, the results of the last test report that the maximum load current reached 141 amperes, direct current. And the alternating current was 1.57 amperes, quite good value. Again, the alternator is rebuilt, and the voltage was 14.5 volts. Generally, all these results mean that the diagnostics is successful, and the alternator conforms with the relevant specifications, thus with all the requirements. If necessary, we can save the test results to the separate file by pressing this button. We've just finished testing the alternator with RLO control terminal. The test results showed that all the alternator parameters correspond to the rated specifications, and we can mount the unit into the car. The alternator will supply the required charge voltage. Now I offer to test the second alternator we have here. It's CA1914. This alternator is installed into Citroën C4, Fiat and Peugeot Expert. The specific feature of this alternator, Lean Bus Control Protocol, meaning the digital regulator is integrated into the alternator. We've connected the second alternator CA1914, controlled by Limpas. All the wires are connected, and we are trying to find this alternator in the database. Press Database, insert the number of alternator, The bench identified the alternator model. We accept it. In the right part of the display, you can see all the parameters of the alternator. In particular, that it's COM control type. The alternator is designed for 12 volt systems. The maximum load current 150 amperes, etc. Select automatic test. First, we test COM connection. The test completed, the call is set up. The test results display the main parameters of lean voltage regulator, such as ID number, BSS protocol type, etc. The following test stage – start speed test. The test completed. 
we've checked the charge voltage. The bench said the required voltage 14.34 volts, and it was kept. The next test stage – voltage regulation. This test is also completed successfully. The last thing we have to check – the alternator at the maximum load current – 150 amperes. Let's do it. As we can see, the last test is not successful because the alternator couldn't reach its maximum load at the stable voltage, meaning that once the alternator has reached 140 amperes, the output voltage started falling lower than the critical value, and the test has terminated. The bench computer reports that the alternator diagnostics at the total power failed because the alternator couldn't generate the total power. The summary of the video. The availability of the database makes the diagnostics on the bench more convenient. There's no need to use any external information sources. All the information you need for the connection of the alternators you can get in the database. You just need to know the number of the alternator. Besides, the usage of the database eliminates the necessity of setting of the maximum alternator load current because the database already contains this information. Thus, you don't have to set the pulley diameter. It's available in the database as well. As I mentioned earlier, we can test the alternator both automatically and manually. The usage of database makes the diagnostics easier. I hope our video will be helpful when you operate the bench and use the database. See you soon here.